have a number of electrons and protons in your nucleus. This newly charged of atom, ion is its name. Welcome back. In the last video, we, have, we went through an experiment we've done in class, and we went through the suitability of different separation techniques to separate mixtures of different compounds. What we're going to do in this video, we're going to cover the next dot point, and the actual two dot points, which are related. And I'll go over the actual dot point. It says, describe situations in which gravimetric analysis supplies useful data for chemists and other scientists. And the other one is an experiment you've done, just to go through gravimetric analysis again, and to estimate the percentage composition of different substances. I'll go for that in a second. I'll start with why would we want to find out what the percentage company or what, what is inside, for example, substances or compounds or mixtures. So if, for example, someone gives you a dare, so the dare is to drink salt water, and he says you get a hundred bucks if you drink this cup of salt water. You might want to know how much salt is in there exactly because, I mean, if it were, for example, one percent concentration, that would be about sea levels, so that would be um, drinking seawater. And whilst that would be completely disgusting, you might be able to do it and not be harmed. But if that concentration were higher, so for example, if of that water, let's say maybe 10% were actual salt, and if you were to actually manage to drink that, you might actually die. So that would be obviously be pretty bad and you don't want to die. So you would want to find out how much of that actual solution is salt before you take that there to make sure you don't die when you do it. You obviously, I mean, you generally wouldn't die because you would just spit it out, but just theoretically, let's say you would drink it all and you would be able to not spit it out before you consume it. So in this case, you want to find out exactly how much composition is salt to, to make sure that you don't, don't die when you accept it there. But in other ways, we also have to do it for different reasons. So for example, these are, this was a theoretical unlikely scenario, but these are actual ways we use it, the ones I'm going to mention now. So for example, a food scientist would use it to find out how much in terms of the protein it is. So you, you have seen this, this is a food label here. And the food label tells you how much of each nutrient. So how much of each nutrient there is in the food. And how do we find that out? Well, we find that out through using that kind of procedure that I mentioned earlier, the, the, the oh, well, I'll mention soon, the gravimetric analysis. And this gets you the detail of how much fat there is, how much cholesterol, how much um, protein, how much carbohydrates. So this is one of the situations that we would use gravimetric analysis to make sure we can actually find out the composition of different foods. Right, so that was one scenario. Another scenario would be, for example, if you are close to water which might be polluted, so polluted water. And we want to know exactly what is inside water, but also how much is inside water. So what and how much. Well, what you could do is you could take a sample of the water and then actually evaporate the water and find out what's left over. So find out what's left over and then measure what's left over and then find out how much of the water itself is actually polluted and what's inside the water. And that's done quite often to find out if we need to make sure that our drinking water or our water in rivers is polluted and if so, how polluted it would be. And another sort of situation we can do, use is we, if we want to check alloys. Now you're going to cover alloys soon. Alloy is just a combination of two different metals, two different metals. And we want to make sure we know what composition these metals have. So for example, a very popular one is steel, right? Steel is a combination of iron plus carbon. Now usually carbon is, I think it's about two to three percent of steel is carbon, and the higher you have in terms of carbon, the more brittle it becomes. So you want to make sure you find out, you know, before you use it in like a construction area, you want to find out if that steel is actually the appropriate steel. Because if it has too much carbon, it becomes too brittle, which would mean that it would actually could break and then the house itself could fall down. So to check alloys, we use that gravimetric analysis to make sure that it's the appropriate combination of the two different metals. Uh, these are three different scenarios. That was the first dot point. Describe situations in which gravimetric analysis supplies useful data. For example, for a food scientist to figure out what kind of nutrients are in, in our food. For scientists dealing with pollution, and that would be to make sure that they can find out exactly how much pollutants are in our water to see if it's safe to drink.
And if, if not, then what they should do about it. Or for scientists dealing with steel, to figure out how much actual steel, how, how many metals and in what kind of percentage make up those alloys. So for example, is steel used for buildings the right combination of iron and carbon, or does it have too much carbon which would be bad for the actual buildings? So these were a couple of the scenarios, and what I go over next is your first investigation. So what you've done is for, in this investigation is you first you would have had a distillation flask. In that distillation flask you would have put boiling chips into it. You had an electrical balance, this is all your equipment. You would have had 150 mil beaker, a Bunsen burner and a retort stand, and a couple other things, but these are the most important parts. And again, the idea behind this experiment was to use the gravimetric analysis to find out the, to estimate the percent, percentage compositions, how much of a certain thing is actually made up of salt or water. In this case, we're going to use salt water. So you would have also had salt water. So these are the steps you would have done. You would have first first step was to weigh the distillation flask and the boiling chip and this was before you put anything into it. So you weigh the distillation flask with the boiling chip plus the beaker. So let's say that just this is for the flask. The flask before you put anything into it weighed 200 grams. That was the first step. Next we poured 50 mils of salt water, so that was a salt solution, into a distillation flask and we reweighed it. So we reweighted it, now we say, okay, it was 200 without, but beforehand, now it's 250. That was the second step. The third step is to set up the distillation flask and place the beaker at the end, and then the fourth step is to heat the flask. And this is what I mean by this. So we have, for example, this setup. We have our Bunsen burner here. This is going to flame the actual, heat the actual distillation flask. We've got the distillation flask, and inside we've got our salt solution. This was a 50 mils of salt solution. Now, the distillation flask obviously is still with condensation, so you're going to have something rising and going into the beaker, which we set up. We've also weighed this beaker beforehand, but we set it up to be at the end. So I said that um, place the beaker at the end, so the beaker is right at the end. What's going to happen once we've set all this up is you're going to have the thing which has the lower boiling point will evaporate, and obviously when there's salt and water in there and salt has a much higher boiling point, so it's only going to be water that will actually pass through. And eventually, the speaker will have all the water from the actual flask will be in here, and there will be more or less no more water left in the actual flask because all the water is left to the speaker. Right? So that was step four and five. We heated the actual flask. We've evaporated the water, and the water has gone over into the beaker, and what's left over are these salt grains. And now that we've done this, what we can do is we can reweigh the flask after evaporation has happened. And after we reweighed it, it weighs 202 grams. So what that means is before we did anything, before we added anything, it was 200 grams, but now it's 202 grams, even after all the water is gone. So obviously there's two grams more than there was beforehand, and that comes from the salt. But how you can actually calculate that is this equation is resi residue divided by initial weight times 100. So residue, the thing that was left over, was obviously 202 minus 200, that's just whatever we have left over, which equals to 2, divided by 52 because at 50 mils weighed 52 grams. So 52 comes on the bottom because that's the initial. And if we do that, 2 divided by 52, we and times 100 to get the percentage, we get 3.8%. What that means is the actual salt is 3.8% of our weight of the whole solution. And we can use that for this kind of example, but we can also use it for a lot of the other things. Like for example, if we want to check out pollution, we can see what kind of stuff is in the, our water, or at least how much it weighs. Right? So this kind of procedure we don't just use for salt and solution. We use it for lots of different things. But I hope this was useful. Thank you for watching.